of Famer and one of the all-time greats again here, Donna Sakai. Donna, it's good to see you, and I hope you're doing well there. Thank you, Mark. It's great to see you. I'm glad, I'm happy to be part of this Pong Positive interview series. Well, thank you for being a part of it. And you and I were talking a bit off air. You're there in Maryland. I know you are one of those people that kind of moves around quite a bit. And uh, you and I have uh, seen one another before in Las Vegas when we're running the big events out there. But I know you're back on the East Coast right now, close to your family and uh, very really happily ensconced with your great husband, David Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that, that's wonderful for me. <laughs> well, luck, lucky you, as they say. You know, uh, Donna, it looks like I was looking at your profile there on USATT's website. It looks like you played most recently at the Arizona Open that, uh, oh. that in late February that you had played back there. And actually, it appeared that you played very well, which is very consistent with the way you are. You're always, it seems, playing table tennis. Well, yes, I do love playing. Um, I had a dry spell there for a while, a good part of uh, 2019, um, the first half. But since then, I've been able to practice and play quite a bit, either in Las Vegas or now here again in Maryland. So I was, I was happy with the Arizona tournament. <laughs> it, it looked like you did pretty well out there. I noticed that you played uh, appeared Dan C. Miller Jr. even in, in a <laughs> match, in a round robin match out there. It's always fun to play someone who is really a great player, you know, yeah. as long as they aren't too mean. And he was not. So, Well, you talk about uh, the first half of 2019, probably not as much table tennis you would have liked. But uh, I distinctly remember, I believe, seeing you at the 2019 Open there in Fort Worth. Were you, is that was my memory uh, serving me right there? That's right. Yes. Did I get my? Well, yes, I guess so. Um, yes, I did play in Fort Worth. The last two years have been rather um, muddled for me. So, <laughs> Well, the, the, of course, you've got a long history of playing table tennis and in a variety of contexts as well on the administrative side and otherwise. I noted that you're a Hall of Famer. Your career starts way back when, uh, as I understand it, back in the, the, uh, in the 50s in, in uh, Washington, D.C., because your father, it appears, was heavily involved in what I think was known as then as U.S., Table Tennis Association. Very good. That's an accurate uh, description of how I started when I was 10, actually. It, it appeared to me that of all places to start, and I know that you're a big proponent of women in sports, but to start, I think in a boys club of all places, maybe the only place that might have been available there in D.C. to play in that era. Well, actually, I think we may have met um, the local table tennis promoter and coach at a boys club, but there was actually a table tennis club um, on 7th Street, right right in downtown, and that's where we would go. And Donna, you took to it rel relatively early in life and had tremendous success early going that uh, you developed some rivalries with people that I think are still rivalries uh, to this day, your sister Barbara, obviously, and also Connie Swearis. And uh, those are, if you look at the history of USATT and uh, table tennis in America, those rivalries kind of parallel the history of the sport itself. Yes, particularly when we were young, Connie and I were, were very competitive. And then um, as time went on, our, our lives went different ways. She stayed in table tennis for a while. I left. And, and now we're more, um, we're more partners than competitors because we played in the world veterans and two world veterans. Um, actually, we were hoping to play in the third um, later, well, actually next month in France, but that's not to be. I think they're actually have moved that over, if I'm not mistaken, till next April's when uh, the, the uh, event in Bordeaux is going to be held. And I'm imagining both you and your husband, David, will be headed to France for that event. Well, that's the hope, clearly, yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, uh, you know, we talk about the successes that you had earlier in your career, and there were several, you know, as I understand, you made it to the U.S. Nationals finals as a, a, a young girl, really. And uh, it was one of those uh, circumstances where you actually were at the highest level of table tennis in a very young age. Ah, uh, yes, I guess you could say that. Yes. And then, um, I decided that uh, I didn't want to pursue table tennis, so I, I retired from the game shortly thereafter. 
course, that, you know, is not a permanent retirement. <laughs> no, rather not, actually, because I became involved in a number of contexts in table tennis, not only as a player, but and also I, I believe that you were a member of the board of directors for USATT for a period of time. And I think that you're still involved in, in an administrative context as well in table tennis. So obviously something brought you back. What was it? that brought you back to table tennis after taking a short pause? Uh, I don't really remember any one specific thing. It's just, you know, as life takes different turns and I uh, went back to my table tennis roots and started playing again just locally. And then I guess when maybe I was 30, I think was when I started to get back in. And then um, David and I, of course, at some point we um, met up again and, of course, ever since I've been married to him now, and that's been, what, 35 years, table tennis is a very- Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Five years of bliss with yes. David Kai. You know, it, it is interesting. It's one of the great love stories of table tennis, I suppose, is uh, you and David, who I know are both, you know, gr first of all, uh, and I've been the uh, recipient of your uh, very kind hospitality on a number of occasions there in Las Vegas, and I should thank you for that. But both of you do have a pretty heavy competitive streak as well. Both of you uh, do not take losing very lightly at all. Well, does anyone really? <laughs> uh, maybe not. I, I'm, uh, some people are a little bit more fiery than others, though. And, and I, have to say, I always talk with David in, at, at the events, at the Nationals and Open and otherwise. And uh, he always seems to focus on his losses more than he does on his wins. He's, he's one of those. Well, I guess I'm lucky. I have a very poor memory. I can't say <laughs> the wins or the losses. <laughs> That's probably a good way to be. <laughs> That's probably the best way to be, actually, to, to go on. You know, and obviously, uh, you two have played a, a lot of table tennis. And, and as your careers have advanced uh, through your life, it seems like you've, in a way, have become even more active as a player as you've uh, uh, grown into the sport as, uh, and, and, and grown up and become yeah, old. I think that's true. Clearly, of course, um, once I retired from the telephone company and David, of course, he has his own business of which we're both involved in, but we certainly had more time. We had more resources to, um, to travel. And I think even in, in Las Vegas, we love the environment there. With the, with the table tennis club that we go to and the people we've met. And so it's just all around terrific. Mark Thompson with USATT Hall of Famer, Donna Sakai. And Donna, I was curious about people who have been around the sport a long time, seeing the evolution of the rules, of the equipment, of all the things that have gone on in table tennis in the, the history of USATT and otherwise. And I'm wondering from your perspective, what do you see as kind of the – the big changes in the sport in, in the time that you've been in? Well, gosh, um, from just pimpled rubber to, to sponge um, to the scoring system from 21 points to 11. Actually, there is one change that has happened that I still can't shake, and that was called, <laughs> um, what was it, the, the racket rule. It used to be, even if you were off the table and the ball didn't hit the table but it hit your racket, you would lose the point. Hmm. Now that's no longer um, a rule, but of course then the ball and just the equipment itself is just like everything else. It gets new tech technology, technology and, uh, and improvements. You know, you look at other sports and obviously everyone always talks about players getting bigger, faster, stronger, and otherwise. I suppose it's true in table tennis as well. When you look at the young ladies who are performing now and Think back to, you know, as you were a young person growing up in the sport. Do you see a substantial dis difference between the players we see today and what you had uh, back in your era? It's unbelievable, really. Of course, now it's, it's professional. The amount of off-the-table exercising and routines they go through. Clearly, when I, when I was young, we did not do any of that. You, you know, it's in interesting. We talk about the evolution of the sport, and I suppose we're in one right now as well. We're in the evolution of life right now during this uh, uh, shelter in place in particular due to COVID-19. And I would imagine coming out, you know, you've been an administrator, you've run a lot of big tournaments, you know a lot about running table tennis tournaments. I would imagine we're going to see another evolution 
going forward here, particularly with safety and sanitization, the issues that we're going to be dealing with going forward in table tennis. Right, exactly. You know, you, um, you're what, how many feet is a table, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, nine, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a really good point. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're nine feet away from someone, but that, um, you know, there's, with, with the ball that's communally handled, with perspiration, just, um, yeah, it'll be, be interesting. It, it's got a lot of challenges that I suppose come up. I know that, you know, as I know, you've run a lot, of, a lot of tournaments, and people I don't think really, when people are behind the scenes running the tournament, sometimes don't understand all of the complications associated with that. And I would imagine, I'd, you know, in our communications, I, I obviously know you to be an extremely intelligent person that I really enjoy conversing with, those challenges really are something that uh, I, I, I would imagine used all of your skills as a person uh, familiar with the sport and a professional in your line of work as well to try to combine those two and create tournaments that are successful on a, on a pretty large scale. Well, it certainly was, um, I, I say fun now and enjoyable, but during the time of operating those uh, large tournaments. It was very stressful and clearly skills that I had developed, you know, in a work environment then translated to, to help me um, organize and run some of these big tournaments. As, as I understand it, part of your professional career was in kind of the public relations and media relations type of area. And that that's part of it as well, is just promoting the event and promoting the sport and getting getting people to actually participate in the that's, tournament you're holding. Right, the, the pre, um, getting, like you said, getting people to participate not only as, as players, but as spectators, interested parties, and then of course a, a good presentation when they do come to the event. Well, I know you and David well enough to know that you're very active people, and they're in Maryland. I'm wondering, do you do you have a robot? Do you have a table? What's David? What is David doing for crying out loud to stay out of your hair? Well, funny you should ask. That's one plus of being here in Maryland. Um, we actually have a dedicated table tennis room in the basement of our house. It's called the Green Room, and there are lots of players um, who have been here and who have played actually in the Green Room. So we've been playing together uh, almost every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, I know I'm getting better. I'm not sure he <laughs> having to play against my game. But um, if anyone plays like David, they better watch out because I'm <laughs> getting better. You're going to take care of them. <laughs> well, you're, uh, you've, you've piqued my curiosity as to who's been in the green room down there. I'm sure there've been some elite players who have made their way down there. Oh yeah. I probably, I probably shouldn't start naming them because I'm going to, uh, <laughs> Might get them in trouble. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's great. Well, it sounds like you, you all are staying active. It sounds like you're safe and well, I'm very happy for that. I, I'm looking forward to obviously getting back to action. And I'm sure both you and David are as well, but we want to make sure we do it on a, on a safe basis. So I would imagine that we're still a ways away from actually getting the opportunity to play competitive table tennis, uh, particularly, you know, for, for persons who fall in the, in the risk groups. Right. Right. Of which I'm one, but. <laughs> well, I'm there too. So, so <laughs> let's join the, join the club. Well, Donna Sakai, I want to thank you very much for your time, first of all. And obviously, you know, you've been a great, contributor, participant, and otherwise person in the sport of table tennis. Both you and David bring a lot of joy to all of us in the sport, and we're looking forward to more of it coming up in the future. I hope that both of you, we know right now the plan is to be back in Las Vegas in December for U.S. Nationals. We'll be at Mandalay Bay, and you know David was uh, an instrumental part of assisting us in getting back to Las Vegas. We appreciate that very much, and I hope that when we're there in Las Vegas again, when I get a chance to stop by your house and say hi. Well, I'm sure you will. And um, yeah, I look forward to that as well. Well, Donna, thank you very much. Tell David I said hi. I'm sure we'll be talking. We'll probably do one of these Pong positive interviews with him as well. Put him at the ready. Just tell him that, uh, that Mark's looking for him right now. I will. I will. <laughs> well, thank you, Donna. Be safe and uh, tell everybody there, uh, give everybody there our best. 
thank you. And everyone out there, stay safe and stay Pong positive. Thank you, Donna. Take care.